It's important for treatment plant operators to have a good understanding of breakpoint chlorination and other reactions that occur when chlorine is added to water for disinfection purposes. To understand how chlorine reacts when added to natural water sources for the purpose of disinfection, we should first consider how chlorine reacts in pure water. When pure chlorine is added to pure water, it reacts to form hypochlorous acid and hydrochloric acid. Hypochlorous acid is one of the two forms of chlorine in a free chlorine residual. And when the hypochlorous acid dissociates in water, it forms the other form of free chlorine, which is called the hypochlorite ion. This reaction goes both ways and is pH dependent. As pH is lowered, the equilibrium shifts, favoring the formation of hypochlorous acid, which by the way is about 100 times more effective as a disinfectant than the hypochlorite ion. Now conversely, as pH increases, the equilibrium shifts the other way, favoring the formation of the hypochlorite ion. Since there are no impurities in pure water for chlorine to react with, we expect our measured chlorine residual to equal the amount of chlorine added. For example, if we add chlorine at a dose of 2 mg per liter, we would expect a 2 mg per liter residual, which is in fact what we find. And this also holds true if we increase the chlorine added to 4 mg per liter. And I'm sure you're not surprised to find out that if we increase the dose to 6 mg per liter, our pure water residual is also 6 mg per liter. So there's a linear relationship or a direct relationship between the amount of chlorine added and the residual that remains in solution. And this residual is a free chlorine residual that's made up of hypochlorous acid and the hypochlorite ion depending upon the pH. So depending upon the pH, there will either be more hypochlorous acid or more hypochlorite. Well, that's a great theory, uh, but what happens when we add this same chlorine to groundwater or surface water that has these impurities in them, such as iron, manganese, nitrite, or even ammonia, uh, that's the result of decaying natural organic matter that's in the surface water source? Well, let's take a look and see. As we begin to add our chlorine, like we saw earlier on our breakpoint chlorination curve, between points 1 and 2, we have iron and manganese, nitrites, sulfides, and other reducing compounds, so we have no residual. Once that demand has been met and we continue adding chlorine, it's going to react with the natural organic matter and the ammonia in the water between points 2 and 3 and form that combined chlorine, which is for the most part monochloramine and that's formed between points 2 and 3 on our breakpoint curve. Also, between points 2 and 3, this is where trihalomethanes are formed due to the reaction between chlorine and the natural organic matter in the water. And at this peak, we have a chlorine to ammonia nitrogen ratio of 5 to 1. As we continue adding chlorine, there's a reaction between the chlorine and the ammonia and nitrogen and it starts destroying that residual till it bottoms out at point 0.4 which is what we call breakpoint. At the breakpoint we've uh, reduced the chlorine residual as far as it's going to go and now as we continue to add chlorine we're going to see a linear response or a linear increase in the chlorine residual. And it'll be in the form of free chlorine. However, there remains combined chlorine with the free chlorine residual. And as we said earlier, 85 to 90 percent of the total chlorine residual will be in the form of free chlorine beyond breakpoint. Now the form of that chlorine will either be hypochlorous acid or hypochlorite, and that's a pH dependent reaction.